Hey guys, welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity. This is BSL 18 Hasuli, ground of 32. Group D, the losers match between Masiko and Byaxter. I don't think I have the winners match, unfortunately. So I'll have to see who makes it to the round of 32. There were a number of withdraws as well, and I'll see how many replays I can pull out of the round of 32, but it's kind of, it's been rough. Hopefully it'll clear up at the round of 16. Bottom right hand corner by X for starting as the blue Protoss. Bottom left hand corner we got Masiko starting, or Masiko starting as the green Protoss. The uh, quintessential Artosis viewer with that name. Uh, this is on Radeon, which is one of the newer maps, which is very, very fun. Natural, you just gotta, I always do this, wrong, wrong natural with this particular map for some reason. Natural expansion, two eggs, very wide natural expansion. You have that nearby third, but you can see where that third can be poked into from the northern corridor. And this is a pretty, it's a choke, but it's a fairly wide choke. And then you've got the vertical map, so they love showing off uh, at the 6 o'clock and also at the 12 o'clock location. Uh, a little bit less gas than usual, I want to note. So not the full 5,000 or 6,000 that you see at your typical. Oh, click a gas from this height. So not usually like the 5,000 that you'll see. So it's a little bit less at these expansions. It's still a third gas. I think that's a little bit more to force Zerg to be a little bit more aggressive. But what it also encourages Zerg to do, although this is not Zerg at all, is to take the, the lower ramp or upper ramp if they're going lurker of another expansion. But anyway, <clears throat> we'll see. This is PvP, so we'll see how it plays out. Looks like we've got an assimilator gateway opener on one end. We have a gateway, but no gas as of yet. So it looks like it's going to be the 10-12 uh, uh, gate, I believe, for Masiko. So wants to open up aggressive zealot play, pretty much standard. And let's see if we get a first scout from Byaxter. Looks like Byaxter, unfortunately, well, is he going to go cross scout is the next question. If he goes cross scout, he'll get no additional information, I'm realizing, because he'll just see that probe coming out of the base and he won't know whether it came from the north or from the south. Never mind. He's just going to go. So he's doing kind of an X pattern scout. So this is going to be a pretty late scout to the bottom left hand corner. Problem for Masiko as well. Although he, but the scouting pattern and the timing of his probe, it's going to work out where seeing Byagster's probe come out of the base, he'll be able to save himself a few seconds and know that his opponent's bottom right. Uh, and still probably wants to take that probe down there because the more DPS you've got, uh, the better. And probes actually have a little bit of a bonus range. Oh, this is cute from Byagster's part. He's cycling back, trying to blockade. That's actually going to buy him maybe a little bit of time. So Masiko thinking, oh, maybe he's top right and then denied. No. So Dragoon now being built. First Zealots hanging out on the ramp. We do see just the initial two Zealots and the Assimilator behind this. You can still go up to five Zealot behind. Uh, you can still tack on additional Zealots, but you can also opt to just send the three in the space of this. And this allows you to get Dragoons behind this. Your, your hope here is you're going to be able to get up the ramp, get into that probe line. Radeon, a little bit of a harder map to pull this off on, to be honest, because it's quite large uh, by extra moving the probe in the way to if these zealots run attack command maybe wanting to lay them but we have the probe on the low ground looks like by extra is going to have time to get the dragoon on the low ground and one thing that can really be punishing for the zealot encroachment is as if they if the dragoon sits behind it looks like the zealot actually going to get in the way it's going to take a few shots buying even more time and now the zealot's actually completely abandoning and that's going to be additional seconds for that second dragoon to get out in fact that second dragoon Potentially going to be out in the field in short order. Byaxter already has, well, he's got two, uh, all three pylons down, sorry, initially here. The Zealot cycling back, engaging. It's going to get taken care of, but these Zealots have been engaging mostly Dragoons, haven't been getting into the probe line. Sa second gateway dropped uh, to provide that scouting information. It looks like uh, Byaxter wanting to play it a little bit safe, but thus far has done a really good job of micring against these Zealots. Let's see if he can pick that Zealot off. And honestly, these Zealots are fragile enough now that the probes, yeah, see, the probe just sneezes on it. Still, one probe down for Byaxter, second probe down for Byaxter, and Byaxter, in the midst of all this, a little bit down on the worker count, but he's got three Dragoons out. The two Dragoons are already going to be their opposite side, and range is already on the way. The one advantage for Byaxter here is his range will be finished. Unfortunately, trying to walk up high ground against this, it really doesn't do a lot for you, but what it does do, positionally, uh, for opportunities is you can deny that natural expansion potentially and grab that natural expansion a little bit more aggressively yourself. So two Dragoons currently, there should be a third Dragoon by the time this is in place. Byaxter may be wanting to sneak an expansion top left. So he's got a probe all the way here. 
And actually, never mind. He is going to go ahead and drop Citadel of Adun Robotics. He wants to go DT drop as far as a follow up. So the Dragoons initially marching that direction. They're going to back off now. Masiko now has four Dragoons out in the front. So wouldn't have been a lot of hit right there. Range about halfway finished. Third gateway for Masiko. And let's see if Masiko starts moving out with the four Dragoons because it is important to try to confirm what your opponent is up to. Now, here's the thing for Byagster is, is with that robotics facility and that Templar Archives dropping, you will be able to drop DTs. Doesn't necessarily put him, it's a, with the robotics and going for DT drop, it puts him a little bit more all in than would be usual, simply because that slows down that Nexus quite a bit. And it looks like Masiko is staging up to go ahead and grab a Nexus himself. But with that DT out on the map, just knowing there's DTs out there with that observers can oftentimes buy you a decent amount of time so range just about finished the probe walking forward trying to get around sees the fight the six dragoons now making their way out we have four dragoons holding the ramp and two dts being constructed otherwise i'm kind of curious what this is about top left from by it looks like there's just a probe holding up there all together now this could be this will be an interesting play so we got three gate dragoon moving forward once the dts are out though that will be instant defense. That might give time for Masiko to go. It looks like he just, is he going to hold the low ground or is he going to try to bully his way up is the next question. The D's, D's just about finished. The Dragoon's trying to press the way up. And now the DTs are going to be forced to the front. And unfortunately, without detection, it's kind of a race game now of how many workers can Masiko take out. One DT just being left to deal with the Dragoons. That could be a lot of workers killed. And so now by Agster, with that gate breached, Effectively all in with this DT. He is dropping another Nexus top left, though. The probe's drilling and trying to defend themselves. But this is still going to put Byaxter economically behind. We have a forge being built. We got the forge nearly up. Dragoon's pocketing to go ahead and defend. Finally, Byaxter uh, walking the workers away to defend them against this Dragoon. We got that shuttle up. And the thing with the shuttle is with that... And did Masiko see the shuttle is the next question. Because with that shuttle in play, it's going to require even more cannons so we got two cannon yeah it looks like he saw it. he's got two cannons and a third cannon being built along the corner here that nexus is getting slacked away at but we do have this wild card of another nexus here being built top left and because there is no pylon that's going to be a denied natural expansion maybe a dead nexus honestly because it looks like masiko's gonna let it finish this is very brave considering there's no detection out here the shuttle alongside now the cancellation last second he's gonna pilot out might try to sneak his own expansion somewhere on the map he's got to wait for an observer but right now he's just tossing a bunch of photon cannons down and continuing to build dragoons a photon cannon to defend the ramp as well this dt on unfortunately a suicide mission he doesn't quite realize it yet so able to walk in might be able to get this cannon but there's plenty of cannons to defend otherwise yeah i got the vision of it he's going to be able to get that cannon down and actually might even start tacking into that army up here. In the meantime, Byagster has that base up top left. What well, looks like we're going to see a, a Snuck expansion at that position. Masiko having to abandon his ramp. Ooh, but that Dark Templar taking some free hits as exiting out. So this is turning into a, kind of an interesting match. So we got two bases technically up for Masiko. We've got two bases up for, well, soon. We've got Additional base up for Byaxter, which actually is letting him catch up in the overall economy. He's gotten Dark Templar holding the ramp and Observer. He's definitely got the tech advantage. He's getting his third gateway online. If he drop, the one thing is, is we'll see if this, uh, this is a lot of resources dropped from Byaxter, or sorry, from Masiko into Photon Cannons. He'll have Obs Observer out. Where is his robotics even? Okay, so he's built a bunch here. He's got the Observatory, so there must be robotics. Is it hidden back? Yeah, that's where it's hidden. Hidden in the bottom left-hand corner underneath the mini-map just to fool us all. But the Dark Templar, in the meantime, will provide a little bit of forewarning. Supplies even, worker count even. And the game has kind of reset, although by extra in a decent position where he can go ahead and grab his natural expansion. He's going to have to be careful about it. The Observer pressing forward. Now, here's the thing. Dark Templar do a significant amount of damage. They play a little bit better than... They're a little bit more fragile than Zealots. But they do really, really good DPS. So, might be able to make up that deficit. The Dragoon, or it looks like, ooh, not the best Observer Discipline here for Masiko. So he's 
getting some free damage as he's making his way across. This is going to be pressing to the natural expansion. The observer floating forward. That observer might get picked off as well. If Byaxter had the wherewithal actually to step forward and pick off that observer, that would open up the Dark Templar to create even more havoc. It looks like it's holding here. This is closer reinforcement position, even gateways. Masiko with a slight supply advantage, but he's holding, waiting for the reinforcements to get here, at which point I presume he's going to dive into this natural expansion. A couple photon cannons getting dropped opposite side from Byaxter. I don't think they're going to be up in time. So let's see if that observer gets picked off and how this goes. Masiko now diving in, the Dark Templar sneaking its way across, the observer fanning its way back, and Masiko seeing those cannons about to come up is going to pull out. And now, unfortunately, for and I think he was thinking, ha ha ha, that natural expansion is so late. I'm in a great position, totally not recognizing that, okay, he's got enough, he's got enough out there that the, this wouldn't just be off the, the amount of gateway production. So the Dark Temple are going to try to sneak back across. We've got a single Zealot trying to defend this with the Observer. That is going to be insufficient. And it looks like it was not on patrol or attack maneuver, finally going to respond. The Dark Templar looks like it's going to get engaged by these two. Well, is the Observer? The Observer is not going to pin on it. Six kills on that Dark Templar, by the way. We see, uh, so continued problems. Dark Templar now pinned in a corner. But so now we got three bases. No worker lead yet. Now it's going to go ahead and get taken care of. No worker lead yet, but it's off the three Nexus. There should be a surge for Byaxter. Right now he's down 20 supply though. So he needs to macro his way back into this. Also, we've got, looks like some, oh, this is unfortunate for Masiko. He's checking for additional bases. Wanting to isolate and say, okay, well, you got to drop your way out of this. Okay, we got a fourth gateway. We honestly need a fifth from Byaxter. It looks like he does have plus one weapons on the way. Does he have? It looks like he also is going for that uh, Psy Storm play. Plus one weapons is going to be up earlier for Masiko. So he actually might have a window here where plus one weapons is going to be up much earlier. He's got a decent amount of supply. But the unfortunate thing for him is he just doesn't recognize that he's in an economic deficit. Maybe this Dragoon finds it, top left. The two cannons will definitely hold against that single Dragoon. And unfortunately for Masiko, with the Zealot leg speed and everything else going on, is that shuttle still alive? Their shuttle is still in the corner. If he tries to attack top left and there's vision on it, Byaxter could go for, with his supply, could go for a counterattack at the natural expansion. As that th So three base versus three base. Byaxter up workers. Zealots marching their way across. I gotta say, somehow Masiko up. So where I was saying, okay, never mind, he's got that. But he's got three bases up too. A bit of a spread overall. So now I'm I'm gonna pull back everything I said and say I'm not sure. The High Templar could be a big swing in fortunes here. But right now, Byaxter is actually fallen behind in macro, despite having three bases up much, much earlier, which is leaving a larger army that also has plus one weapons. Now, the Psy Storm could completely negate that. Billion cannons top left, uh, BGH style. Masiko is a little bit more vulnerable as far as... So he's got four cannons there, but he doesn't have... He's got one cannon as natural. Is mounting a large army, but also plus one weapons, plus one armor, about to finish for Byaxter. And Byaxter still can go Storm Drop, which it looks like he's saddling up to do right this second making his way towards that natural expansion. This could be the, the shift in the game. Do we have a shuttle? Yeah, it looks like a shuttle's making its way top left as well to go ahead and drop in the main. A single photon cannon being warped there, but that might trigger a counterattack from Byaxter. So this is this game's all over the place. High Templar dropped, it's not detected. Oh, every single worker getting annihilated there. Masiko now way behind economically. The shuttle, where did the, did the shuttle die? I might, okay, never mind. there's the shuttle. It's going to try to elevate our troops top left. By extra, all of a sudden up in supply. But keep in mind, a good portion of that is in workers. I think an observer just got picked off here. So initial troops dropped. Two additional... Was that spotted? Because additional photon cannons are getting dropped in the main. I still don't... If Depending on how Masiko engages this, this should still be fine. Psy Storm and Caldarian... Amulet, amulet being upgraded, although... So we got a little bit of size storm. The troops marching in. Probes trying to defend themselves. Unfortunately, not able to help defend that first cannon. Second cannon going up. But this is triggering the counterattack now for Byaxer. Unfortunately, 
the bulk of his army not grouped up in the midst of this, but he does have that armor advantage. And so actually p crushing a good portion of that army, he's up on supply all of a sudden. Top left is still standing. He lost a lot of workers, but he's diving in for the counterattack. And really, I think the big thing in this attack will be this, where is he? Where's that High Templar? The High Templar just sitting there at the natural. Never mind. He's not going to be a part of this fight. So let's see how this plays out. By extra regrouping, Psystorm now from Asiko. He's getting, he's blanketed all of the Dragoons. So getting the better part of that fight. By extra suddenly remacroing his observer a little bit too far. More High Templar are starting to push into this. We got some Archons here in the background. Plus one armor just about to finish from Asiko. He's all of a sudden up in supply. This has just gone way back and forth. Somehow it looks like the units that were top left got drawn into the cannon line in the midst of all this distraction, so they've been wiped out. And Byaxter not missing a beat, trying to grab the natural expansion. Not the best size storm, size storming a lot of his own zealots right here. Kind of a messy fight between the natural expansion bottom left and bottom right. The shuttle trying to swing back around looks like it was able to scoop out some troops. The worker counts restabilized between the two, so grabbing that additional base might be the advantage. The High Templar dying. They are getting the side storms expended, but and there it looks like there's just nothing but zealots, and those zealots are going to run into this Archon potentially in between. If these Archons actually can swing around, that might be a winning fight for them, because between that and... Ooh, not if they don't attack and just get straight up picked off there. There was a, a winning scenario where there would be like some walking fight with the Archon right there. Just with the splash. But now, I don't know. This has been a crazy match, I have to say. Unit dying. Okay, right there. So, main is now mined out for Masiko. He's back to two bases. The main is nearly mined out for Byaxter, but he's already grabbed a fourth top left. Supply. Uh, we have more High Templar on Masiko's side. Byaxter still hasn't engaged. He's still got the, the High Templar in the shuttle to do extra shenanigans at some point. His high Templar are filtering out. It looks like they've got a good amount of size storm with the energy upgrade behind them. Masiko cycling around looking for an attack. He's got a probe going top left, maybe to grab an additional base at near enemy territory. We got a battle probe with a little bit of minerals wanting to explode upon the troop line, even though that doesn't do damage. It's the thought that counts. This is honestly storm bait. That is a massive size storm on, on the Dragoons and the Zealots. Bad initial engagement here for Masiko, and just you can hear all of the zealots getting absolutely annihilated right there. And I think that was the entirety of Masiko's army just getting obliterated with two really bad initial size storms. So, gonna GG. That was a nutty one. We're gonna go into game two because this is now the best of three stage. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.